Hello and welcome to the European Parliament. My name is Catherine Fjord and I'm delighted to welcome Kathleen Che, one of the new MEPs, one of the, 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 the new intake in 2019. Uh, you're already vice president uh, of, of your group, the Renew Group, and um, you're from the Momentum Party uh, in Hungary. Yes. Um, yesterday you made quite a powerful speech in the hemicycle defending the rule of law and saying that people are kind of fed up hearing about Hungary and uh, in a negative light. And certainly what comes to mind is Viktor Orban's declaration on things like illiberal democracy. Uh, did you feel that your voice was heard in the parliament yesterday? I very much hope so. Because I'm here with a mission to show that there is another side of Hungary, that uh, we indeed are not only illiberal people, that a lot of uh, Hungarians believe in democracy, want to fight for the rule of law, and want to live in a truly European country. Uh, this is the mandate my voters sent me here, and I'm here to represent this kind of new European, modern and progressive Hungary. And Momentum itself is really quite a recent party. I'm told that it was really only founded around 2017. Um, uh, how has it, uh, how has it tr transformed into a party that's winning almost 11% yeah. of the vote in really quite a short amount of time? Well, indeed, that's true. So Momentum was a grassroots movement uh, founded by uh, my friend of mine and, and, and me alongside them. Uh, and we felt that we are not being represented. Uh, we felt that there is no voice for uh, the progressive people, for the young people who want change. And uh, we started our movement. And yes, indeed, on the, only in two short years, we managed to qualify for the European Parliament uh, with 10%, which is a great result for us. But this is only the beginning. Uh, so we have this great energy in the movement. We want a fair country. We want a well-functioning Europe. We uh, want universal rule of law to be applied. All all over our union and, and we want uh, our voices heard. We want to fight for it because we are young people and uh, we want to live in a country, in a continent where we can actually have a future compared to Orban's illiberal Hungary where uh, unfortunately hundreds of thousands of young people are, are, are moving away. You are going to be on the, the Committee on Industry Research and Energy and one of the red lines that were laid down by the European People's Party in relation to the Fidesz Party was the question of academic freedom. Now we've seen the Central European University leave and set up uh, a base in Vienna and we also see the, the recent attack on the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. In, in your role as a member of that committee in dealing with research, how important is it that we have uh, academic freedom in Europe? And will this, is there a potential that Hungary and its research base will lose out by, by, by attacking these institutions? Well, yes, unfortunately, just in the recent weeks, we saw the Hungarian Academy of Science basically being dismantled by the Orban regime. And uh, we believe that this is not only a great loss for our country, but a great loss for the European Union as it is. Uh, because if we want a strong Europe that is united, that uh, provides guarantees for every European citizen, there has to be a guarantee for the freedom of science, for the freedom of academia all over our continent. And uh, I think it's important to note that if things like that can happen in one member state, there is no guarantee that it wouldn't spread over to other member states. So that's why the European Union has to make its voice heard in that issue. I personally put forward a uh, question in, in my party group and we accepted a statement on, uh, on calling on the Orban government to, to withdraw that, that law that just came into force that strips the Hungarian Academy of Science of its research institutions and I want to fight for this goal also in my committee. The debate yesterday uh, in the parliament and the, or the various negotiations that preceded that debate with, um, with uh, uh, Ursula von, von der Leyen. In her presentation yesterday, in her statement, do you think that she has taken on these arguments? Because like you say, it's not just a question of Hungary. We see this tendency also developing in Poland and indeed in Romania. Well, I believe that 
we as the European Union has to, have to become a community of values. We are not only a trade deal between countries. We are a community that has to provide opportunities. We have to provide rights for every European citizen equally. And uh, if the rule of law is being breached in member states, that's a loss for the entire union. And therefore, I very, very much welcome Wander Ursula von der Leyen taking on board our suggestions uh, from our group meeting uh, the week before. I, I'm happy that uh, her presentation yesterday was very concrete on certain issues, but I would personally demand more uh, concrete actions, concrete plans on the rule of law issue, for instance, because we heard a lot of nice words in the last nine years, and we so just saw uh, the European People's Party doing nothing. The European P People's Party has drawn multiple red lines, and Viktor Orban stepped over every single one of them without any serious punishment. So we see Fidesz vice chairs uh, on the EPP election list uh, for important committees, and. I, I believe that we really have to make a point here that we Europe should not watch with a blind eye when uh, authoritarian regimes are uh, in bloom within our union. So I, I'm really hoping that uh, um, Commission uh, President von der Leyen will be a firm supporter of this idea and we will certainly will try to take her accountable for her promises. And in terms of concrete measures, the Commission will be putting forward a new communication in the, the near future. Um, are you supportive of that? Have you seen it? And um, what you say you want very concrete measures. Uh, what, what, what exactly would you like to see? I mean, we've seen this Article 7 procedure, which is very slow, very laborious. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be have the transformative effect that it's meant to have. I mean, what, what, what can the EU do? Well, first of all, the Article 7 procedure is indeed a great example of uh, only having declarations and uh, not proceeding with uh, measures the Parliament have uh, already accepted. So I would like to see progress on that regard. But uh, another very important thing uh, for us is the Office of the European uh, Public Prosecutor. Uh, because right now, Hungary refuses to join EU scrutiny over EU funds. I believe that it's absurd that uh, the EU is financing an authoritarian regime uh, with EU taxpayers' money, and the EU taxpayers' money is not being spent in a proper way, and right now there is basically no oversight from the European side. So we would like to see the European Public Prosecutor's Office to be compulsory uh, for every country who receives EU funding, and this is only also not only a Hungarian issue, but it's an issue for the entire community, so that our taxpayers' money can be safeguarded better. So I would very much welcome that the uh, EPO office, hopefully being headed by Ms. Kodruta Koveshi, mm -hmm. will be able to scrutinize uh, Hungarian, uh, um, Hungar uh, the Hungarian way of spending EU money. I asked Viktor Orban about the European Public Prosecutor's Office when he was in Brussels um, recently, and he said that it it goes against the Hungarian constitution. Well, uh, Viktor Orban and his party has changed the Hungarian constitution like 200 times in the last nine years. They have the supermajority in the parliament, so if they want to or if they have to change the constitution, they have all the powers to do so. Uh, so th that's why I believe a stronger stand from the EU side is necessary to, uh, for the EU to put forward a strict condition on EPO when it comes to EU funding, because the, it's in the Orban government's power to comply with that. If the only response that the EU can have is one that is a negative one, we're going to cut your funding, isn't there a danger that you will be seen in, Hung in Hungary as an anti-Hungary party uh, that is stopping funding, that, that you are seen to be part of an elite, an establishment, a globalist, or I, I don't know how Orban frames these things these days, but you know, isn't the danger that he will use it to his uh, political advantage? Just let me clarify something. I don't want the EU to cut funding. Mm -hmm. I want funding to reach its destination. And this destination is not the uh, Orban government, but is, uh, the funding destination should be uh, local authorities, should be small businesses, should be independent uh, people who have good ideas, who want to develop our country. Uh, the destination of these funds is cohesion and not uh, the welfare of uh, the cronies 
uh, circling the Orban government. So I would very much welcome an inc a great increase in direct EU funding compared to uh, indirect funding that goes through the government. And I am really hoping also that uh, if there is a condition of joining the EPO office in return of receiving EU funds, the Orban government will have to uh, respect that, uh, that call and will indeed provide scrutiny over its finances. Because let's face it, right now Hungary without EU funds is uh, in a very bad economic situation. And obviously I don't want to strip uh, the Hungarian people from these funds, but I want to strip those oligarchs from these funds who are actually uh, building uh, 40 centimeter tall uh, watchtowers and uh, or, or, for instance, the uh, son-in-law of Viktor Orban, who mm. received a great amount of uh, EU public finances. I don't think that's the way European taxpayers' money should be sent. Um, you, you mentioned the economic situation in Hungary. But yes, last week, uh, Pierre Moscovici presented his forecasts uh, uh, for the EU. And in fact, uh, Hungary was one of the, the countries with higher growth. And certainly, this is something that Orban will point to as a sign of his success um, in having one of the highest rates of growth in Europe. Yes, sure, and uh, these numbers are looking very good on, uh, on the surface. But if you want to look into the further conditions of uh, an economy that is workforce, for instance, that is quality of life, that is hospitals, uh, there is the quality of in infrastructure, and we are way not there yet. I am a doctor originally. I used to work in a Hungarian uh, state healthcare system. And uh, I have to say to you that we don't have the conditions that could provide for a sustainably uh, healthy workforce. Uh, we uh, have an education system that is in shambles that is not prepared to, uh, to, to, to prepare uh, Hungarian pupils for uh, the challenges of the di digital economy, for instance. Uh, if we continue in not investing in our people, uh, we will be in a very dire situation very soon. Thank you very much indeed, Katalin Che, and I wish you the very best of luck in this uh, current parliament. Thank you very much.